The Talmud in Masechet Tzanit tells the well-known story of Choni Amagel, a great rabbi of 2,000 years ago who once saw an old man planting a carob tree. Choni laughed at him and he said, don't you know that carob trees take 20 to 30 years to bear their fruit? The old man said, I'm not planting this tree for myself, I'm planting this tree for my descendants. Ah, Choni went off laughing. A deep sleep came upon him. He woke up after 70 years. And then he came outside and he saw little children playing games while munching delicious carrots. He said to them, where's the old man who was planting the tree? Ah, they said, our legendary great-grandfather. He passed away many years ago, but it's thanks to him that we today are safe and happy and healthy. The Talmud tells the story in order to highlight for us the responsibility we have, not just to look after our world of today, but rather to invest in a good, safe and healthy world for the generations to come. It is for this reason that issues such as climate change should not be allowed to be peripheral matters to deserve the attention and fascination of just a few people. But on the contrary, climate change needs to be one of our top priorities. We must fulfill the biblical command of Da Ule Shomra to work in this world and to guard it for the future. For this reason, I commend Jonathan Waxman and the Hampstead Garden Suburb Show for all that you are doing to highlight this hugely important issue for us. A huge shakalach to you all. Thank you, Chief Rabbi. I'm Johnny Waxman. I have lived in Hampstead Garden Suburb since 1986 been a member of HGSS all that time, raising my family here and taking an active role in the life of this wonderful warm community. As the name suggests, this is a beautiful part of the world with trees, green spaces and the changing seasons an integral part of our daily life. This is one of the views I have enjoyed almost every day since we moved here. On my walk to Golders Green Station, or these days, just my government mandated daily. I want to talk today about nature and our place as humans in it and in particular about the climate crisis. Especially I want to tell you why and how I believe we can rise to the challenge of averting the climate crisis before it gets any worse. This is another picture of where I live. This photo was taken by astronaut Bill Anders in December 1968 from Apollo 8, the first human mission to the moon. So beautiful, but also for the first time in human history, appearing small, maybe even fragile. The Earth hangs in space and is the recipient of the bounty of sunshine all year round. And that sunshine is the ultimate source of the energy that powers all life on Earth. The Earth is blanketed by a thin, thin layer of gases. Mostly the nitrogen and oxygen that we breathe, but also traces of carbon dioxide and others that have the fortunate property of acting like the glass on a greenhouse. And they keep the Earth's climate warm. Were it not for those greenhouse gases, the average temperature of the Earth would be minus 15 centigrade. Really not much fun for holidays. Instead, those greenhouse gases keep the Earth a nice cosy 15 centigrade. But you can have too much of a good thing. Venus, whose atmosphere is made up largely of greenhouse gases, has an average temperature of 450 centigrade. So it's a real Goldilocks story. Not too hot, not too cold, just right. And that is what our planet is, for us, that is. However, the problem is that since the Industrial Revolution in the 18th century, we have been using fossil fuels in ever-increasing quantities to do great stuff. But as a side effect, dumping steadily larger and now huge amounts of carbon dioxide and its even uglier sister, methane, into that thin layer of atmosphere on which all life on Earth relies. 
Look, here is a graph of the increase in atmospheric carbon dioxide over my lifetime. And another one over the last 2,000 years. And exactly as Eunice Foote predicted in the 19th century, as a result of the rising concentration of carbon dioxide and these other greenhouse gases in our atmosphere, global temperatures are rising steadily. As you can see from this graph, the average global temperature has risen by around one degree centigrade over the last 100 years, with most of that in the last 50. What does this mean for us? Well, there is a huge amount of research that has gone into that very question. What will happen to us if we continue emitting greenhouse gases at the current pace? The answers range from terrible to catastrophic, and they read like a litany of the 10 plagues, but played out for millennia on a global stage. I will just highlight one effect that we are already seeing, rising sea levels as ice that is locked on land in Antarctica, Greenland and glaciers melts and runs off into the ocean. Sea level has already risen by around 20 centimetres and we do not know how this may evolve in the future. But worryingly, the last time that global temperature was 1.5 degrees warmer than now, sea levels were 20 metres higher than current levels, meaning that most of London, or the area that is now in London, was underwater. So what should we do about this? It's pretty straightforward. We just need to stop adding greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. Stop burning coal, petrol, oil and gas. And research shows that pretty much when we stop adding greenhouse gases, the Earth's temperature will stop rising. It won't go back down for a long time, but it will stop going up. And that's the good news. The bad news is that this is quite a tough thing to do, given just for example, our gas boilers, our petrol cars, and our jet fuel powered aircraft. And here is a graph of how carbon emissions have grown and how we need to bend the curve down to gradually bring the warming under control. And why have we done nothing about it? As you see, although climate change is well understood, what it is, and why it is so dangerous. The emission of greenhouse gases into our atmosphere has not only continued, it has actually accelerated. How is that possible? It's simple, PPE. It's not the PPE you're thinking of. P for politics. Climate change is a very long-term problem, whereas we elect our government every few years. P is for psychology. Well, climate change is not one of these. So we feel pretty okay about not dealing with it just yet. E is for economics. The atmosphere is a free bin. It's available to all of us to use and the carbon pollution we are putting in it is invisible, has no smell and is not toxic. So why not? There are reasons for concern, maybe even room for anxiety, and I know I feel that sometimes, but there are also some great reasons to be cheerful. Number one, tremendous strides forward in developing technologies that can replace fossil fuels. There are many examples, but just for one, here is how the price of solar panels, a zero carbon source of energy, has fallen by more than 99% since 1975. Two, where there has been policy put in place specifically to reduce carbon emissions, these policies have been stunningly successful. Here is a graph 
of how in 10 short years, the annual carbon emissions produced by the generation of UK electricity have been reduced by 60%. The world is waking up and rousing from its climate slumber. New legislation, whether it be the Global Paris Accord or UK legislation to reduce net emissions to zero by 2050, or simply the rising awareness across companies and society that climate change is an agenda topping item that must be tackled. As the Chief Rabbi pointed out, the Torah says that we were placed in this Eden, le Ovda ul Shomra, to work in it and to look after it. Far from looking after our garden, we are actively damaging it. This must stop for our sake and for the sake of those who come after us. And let us be like Choni Hamagel, be the person who builds a better world. Thinking about the climate crisis should inform our decisions about how we drive, what we eat, how we heat our homes, how we invest our savings, how we talk to our politicians and how we vote. I would like to think that we as a community could start to have a proper conversation about this, about this most important subject. And I, for one, dream of a net zero suburb by 2030. Thank you and Shana Tovah.